Well, let's see. Carrigan, are you going to sit over there? Can you see from over there? See the room service? You want to get closer? You, you're welcome to whatever you wish to do. Sitting between mom and dad's not a bad place. And somebody's just not happy. That's always happens too, but she'll get happy later on. Hey, uh, you know, I love a way in a manger. It really starts. It starts all the way up the top of the, of the octave and goes like, A way in a manger, no crib for a bed. It goes all the way down to the bottom. Christmas music is hard to sing. It's hard to play. And I tried to, I brought my guitar. I might play a little Christmas songs. You got a favorite Christmas song? Granny got run over by a reindeer. Coming home from our house Christmas Eve. Something in the chimney, I like, that's one of my favorites. It doesn't make a sound, it's been there all week long. Well, I like A Way in a Manger, but, uh, and, and it's a beautiful song, it wouldn't change any of it for anything, but that part about the little Lord, baby Jesus not crying, that's, that's probably just, you know, saying, well, he's Jesus, he wouldn't be crying. You think, well, Max Lee's probably being a mean little baby because she's crying. But that's, that's not why babies cry. They cry because they don't feel good or they're unhappy or, or you know, that sometimes if they're, they're wet. I think Jesus, if you think Jesus didn't ever have a poopy diaper, I think, you, you know, you need to examine your Christology a little bit. You know what Christology is? Of course you do. Now, <laughs> yeah, I think Jesus cried when he was hungry and he probably cried when he was born. They probably, I don't know, if Joseph held him up pop him on the rear end, make him cry. That's, just kind of, that's what probably what happened to you. Well, I want to show you something today. I, I want to teach you how to do another magic trick. And I, this is called like an impromptu trick. Just using uh, things that you might find around the house. As a matter of fact, in order to do this, before I left Scottsboro this week, I had to remember to bring, I think Aunt Liz gave me this paper towel holder. And I had to bring it from my... Uh, from my apartment in Scottsboro this week. And I like doing the kind of magic that you just kind of do with ordinary objects, like paper towels or napkins. And I'm going to teach you how to do this one. This is one of my favorites. And uh, it involves a little bit of destruction here. Tearing the napkin up. And as I said, I, I like to use the magic wand because it's really not magical. It's just a piece of dowel rod that I've painted and it's very old. It's, it's it really a little, needs another coat of paint. But even though it doesn't have an integral part in the trick this time, it, it is important. Now you'll know why in just a minute. Now I want to show you something. That what you do in this trick is after having torn the paper towel to pieces, it actually is called a torn and restored napkin. And you can do that to how you like that. You're grinning, so I <laughs> smiling. I like that. That's the whole thing of making people smile. Now, the reason I'm going to show you how to do this is because when you do it, you make people smile too. I used to do some magic around Christmas time or at Thanksgiving. I don't think I did any at Thanksgiving this year, but I'm going to show you the secret to this. Okay? Now, the secret is is this. I'm going to show you. Now, watch. I can. I can say that this is just like this, this is this, and that is that. And, uh, but look here. You see that on the back? Look at there. There's two. There's two of them. And let me show you. Guess what about this one? It's all torn up. Just like that. So, you have one that you tear up, and one that... So you're pretending that you're tearing up a piece of napkin and putting it back together magically. So here's what you have to do. I'm going to take uh, another strip of a uh, paper towel. 
I'm just going to keep going because that one didn't tear evenly. I may not, may not be able to pull this off. It's very good to have a napkin stand because I want to show you something that's part of the how you do this. You can do it with just lot, laying the roll down on, on a table or something. But you start, and I did this this morning as soon as I got to church. You tear off a piece of napkin and you make a ball. And I'm going to put it right back here and I'm going to pull the napkin out just a little bit. So it has this too, but I want to put it back behind there so I can show my hands empty. All right, now I'm ready to do the trick. I've already, I do, you do that part before the people that you're going to show it to arrive. So I've got my paper towels and my, I got that little ball back. So what I do is I start telling the story. And while I'm talking, I tear off, and I've already, they've already seen my hands, since there's nothing in my hands. And I tear off a piece of napkin. And when I'm doing that, I pick up the ball. So I have this piece of napkin I just tore up, and now also in this hand, I have the little ball that I just made. I'll show you, watch. See, there it is right there. But what I'm gonna do is let the napkin just kind of break over my hand like that. And even if I took the napkin away, you can't see it. And then what I do is I put the napkin, the ball, behind. So I've got the ball right there. I can cover that up with my hand. What I do is I just tear this one up. And I tear it into four or five strips. And I don't let you see the ball. Because that's the tricky part. Now I'm going to make a ball out of this. And then I can put both balls together as if they were one. Now I've got two balls right there. And then what I do is I turn them over like that. So the torn up one is on the back and the good one is on the front. You got all this? You're going to have to do this later on. You're going to have to do this later on. So, you can go get your, uh, your, your magic wand at any time if you need some help. But now you can see, that it just looks like you have one ball. But you don't, you have two. So I'm going to slide this one, the torn up one, over into my hand. Like that. Kind of blow on it and do magic, uh, magical words and things like that. And when I get it about part of the way open, I put the torn up one behind it. So I can show my hands again. And as I said, you can, while you're doing this, you can use your, your magic wand if you want to and wave it around. And it's really just a distraction as you go. And you want to keep that ball right behind there all the time. And actually, I can switch hands, show this hand that this is empty, and this is empty. You want to be careful, though, never to turn around and let them see that right there, okay? So you can pretend, and it's just pretend, that's all magic really is, magic tricks are just pretend, no such thing as real magic, that you have put a torn napkin all back together again. Now, if you ever make a mistake and, you know, something happens and sometimes things can go wrong, let's say if I'm talking and I'm just running my mouth and, and I look, uh-oh, I've let you see that happen. Well, if that ever happens, the only thing you can do to get out of that kind of trouble is just to... Uh, just unravel that one too and show that both of them are perfectly fine. And that neither one of them are torn up at all. Okay? So now you know how to do a second trick, another trick, just like that. And uh, you put that like that and you're ready to eat. You're ready for lunch. Now, there's a lot of things that I learn about Christmas, a lot of things that I know. But it seems like every time I read the Christmas story or study Christmas, every time Christmas happens, I learn something new. And it's, uh, it's far more magical than tearing up paper towels and napkins, all right? So I'm glad that you're here. Being, I, I'm going to be sharing with the adults today about the true meaning of Christmas. There's a lot of things that Christmas is about. There's really only one thing that it's really all about, okay? Thank you for coming today. You can go back and sit with your folks or continue your color. Just when you thought you had it figured out. 288.